Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Equityverse. Today, we're going to talk about the NASDAQ and tech stocks in general, and discuss whether the performance of tech stocks over the last decade is at all similar to what we experienced in the dot-com boom back several decades ago. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So there's obviously been a lot of talk about, about tech stocks and, and you know the discussions about whether they're overvalued or undervalued. So I just wanted to provide a couple different types of analysis to discuss you know, where, where could tech stocks be currently and are they as overvalued with respect to say some longer term moving averages as they were back in, in the year 2000. So let's go ahead and jump in. One of the things we can we can look at is the 200 week moving average. So this is one of those longer term moving averages. And you can see that back during you know, the, the 90s going into, into the year 2000, we had this major boom in, in tech stocks that led into a mania phase parabolic top, which was then followed by essentially you know, 15 years to sort of claw our way back to those same valuations. Now, one of the things we can do is sort of measure how far extended we were from some of these longer term moving averages to get an idea, are we as extended today as we were back then? I wasn't investing back over here in the year 2000, okay? I, I was not actually investing back then. In fact, I was only 10 years old. So if I had been investing back then, I'd, I, I would probably feel somewhat sad for my childhood. Um, but one of the things we can look at here is the extension from the 200 week moving average. Okay, so let me show you, let me show you the, the, the code for this. All we're looking at, we're taking the 200 week SMA, we're taking the price divided by the 200 week, 200 week SMA, and then we're plotting C, which is the, the, price, the, the price divided by the 200 week SMA. So this is what you get. So when we're at one, this means that the price is equal to the 200 week moving average, right? So what do you notice? You notice there's really only three times where we've gone below the 200 week moving average once in 1990, and then a, a very long period of time between 2001 and 2004. And then again, during the financial crisis that lasted on, on this on this from about 2008, 2009. So three separate times did we go below the 200 week moving average at all in the history that we have on, on TradingView. Now, what if we, we don't look at where we are today, we look at where we were just a few months ago when, NAS, when the NASDAQ was putting in new all-time highs. If we draw a line there across, you can see where we were just a couple months ago with respect to where we were during the dot-com boom. What do you notice? This is not, this is not the same type of parabolic move. I'm not claiming it's not a crazy move. The last decade has been a crazy bull run in, in, in the stock market in general and, and a lot of the different asset classes in general, including things like Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. But we can look at, at something like this and say, you know what, while this has been a fairly impressive time for tech stocks, especially coming off of the pandemic drop back in March of 2020, we did not we have not seen some type of parabolic mania phase that you would that you would expect to happen before you might get another phase like this. Now, one thing I should say is that, you know, whatever happened in the past does not does not necessarily represent what happens in the future. Okay? So we 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 need to fully understand that. There's no guarantees that we need to go do anything like what we saw back then. You could argue that not doing something like that would actually be better. Slower growth might be might be better so that we don't necessarily have to experience a a painful multi-year bear market to follow, but I did think this was at least one interesting way to look at the market. And you could argue that this phase over here, we have dropped down a little bit more recently than we did back over here. This phase sort of seems more similar to, to this phase. Okay, so like we had, we had sort of these lower valuation regions where we were sort of slowly moving up above the 200 week moving average. More interesting is, is probably this one, which you maybe want to compare to this one as well. And then we sort of moved up to, an, to a higher level, a higher extension above the 200 week moving average right here, similar to the one we, we've been in since basically since the pandemic drop. And then now the question is, you know, do we just continue along this humdrum? Do we need to come back down here? Or do we go into a parabolic rally? 
Now, listen, I mean, I've seen all sorts of analysis out there ranging from people calling for the next Great Depression to, to seeing a melt up in the stock market over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, I can assure you, no one really knows what's going to happen. Whenever anything does happen, there's, of course, always someone there to tell you I told you so. But I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that the extension from some of these longer term moving averages isn't quite the same that we saw during the, during the dot com boom. Another thing that we can look at is, say, maybe extension from, say, a shorter term moving averages, a shorter term moving average, not one so, so long. If you look at the extension from the 100 week moving average and compare it to where we were back during the dot com boom, you also see something similar, right? You sort of see this rejection off of a level of extension from the, two, the, from the 100 week moving average, which is also where we face some resistance from recently. But it's not the same type of parabolic rally that spanned from, you know, from late 1998 all the way until early 2000. It's not the same thing. I mean, I, I know, I, and I've, I've spoken to some people about it, while there is definitely, there's definitely been a lot of euphoria over the last year or so, it's not the same level of euphoria, I think, that we saw back then. Even though I was not around the stock market to, to fully understand what it was like back then, at least from a mathematical perspective, it's not the same. I also want to measure it one other way. The last way I'll measure it in this video is to actually take a bar pattern from, from this low to the high and then overlay it from this low. What do you notice? Well, if you do it like this, you see, I mean, as a function of time, right, you see some level of, of diminishing returns. Okay, this is on a log scale, remember, right? You, you, you do see some level of diminishing returns. And, um, and actually, this one, this one has taken a, a bit longer when compared to that one. However, I don't know that that's the best way to measure it because then we had the, the, the financial crisis. And so perhaps measuring it from this point would actually make a bit more sense. Now, what's interesting is if you measure it from this point, if you normalize the ROI, more or less, as measured from that, that low in 2009 compared to you know, this, the, the, the NASDAQ going back to the late 1980s, this is what you get. And what's interesting about this is it actually currently is lining up with, with some of the moves we saw back then. And if, and if you give me the luxury of just sort of shifting this up, there are certainly some similarities with the price back then and today. So while I don't necessarily think it's wise to say with 100% conviction, either we're going to have some type of major depression or we're going to have a melt up in stocks, I don't really know. I don't, I don't really fully know. But what I can say is, look, if you compare the moves over the last, you know, back then to today, the extension from some, some of the longer term moving averages aren't quite as bad as they were back then. And if you normalize this as measured from, say, 1985 until the year 2000, if you overlay it from the financial crisis down here, you can see there are some similarities. And if you give me the luxury of shifting this a little bit, again, the similarities continue to present themselves. The interesting thing about this is that we'll be able to, to know within a few months whether we're whether we're sort of following this path or not because we're either going to you know we're either going to eventually come back up and and recover the losses that we saw over the last couple of months um, or we're going to go on some completely different path so i would say this though if if the nasdaq does get some crazy rally over the next couple of years and does something like that then you need to be on high alert because at that point you know you would have we would have to acknowledge hey you know, this does seem somewhat eerily familiar, even for people who weren't investing in tech stocks back then. Um, so let's just take it one step at a time. Again, this is just a mathematical exercise. It has nothing to do with the underlying fundamentals of the market or what's going on in the world, the macroeconomic conditions like inflation or geopolitical tensions or even, even the events that are ongoing in the world. It has nothing to do with any of that stuff, right? It's just a mathematical exercise to say, look, how does it compare to what happened several decades ago and, and the reason I'm pulling this up is, is because, I mean, I, I, I regularly buy, um, you know, stocks. This is, I, I regularly do that. Uh, I just want to make sure that if something like this happens, uh, which there are no guarantees, but if it does, I want to make sure I don't forget about it is the thing, okay? I'm perfectly happy if it doesn't do something like that. Um, and then we, we go off on some other path. But the, the problem is if we do something like this, then you could argue that it could lead into you know, some type of longer bear market again. 
um, which I would want to be on the lookout for. Now, of course, you could already make the argument that we're already in a potential longer bear market. I know a lot of people are calling for that already. I'm not as pessimistic, okay? Now, part of that could be because, you know, ever since I've been an investor, I've basically just seen the stock market go up, right? It's this sort of this, this up-only mentality, which is clearly not true. Um, and I, I think it's sort of the the older, more experienced investors. I, you know, I'm not as experienced as a lot of, you know, a lot of people maybe watching this video. There's a lot of people that went through this and, and they, they constantly warn people of, hey, look, this stuff can happen. The people that went through the financial crisis uh, warned, you know, hey, this stuff can happen. Don't assume it can happen. So I think what you're seeing out there, you're seeing a lot of investors that experienced these two moves in, in the NASDAQ. They're constantly trying to warn people, hey, this will not last forever. And they're right, right? They, they are right. It will not last forever. Let's keep a close eye on it. If we do get some type of crazy melt-up phase over the next several years, and I think we would want to be on high alert. If we don't get something like that, then, I mean, I mean, clearly we're just going off on, on some completely different path. And, and that's a whole nother, whole nother thing to discuss in entirely. But I did want to provide just a, a, you know, a couple different insights into the NASDAQ and tech stocks in general and comparing them to what happened during the dot-com bubble. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, check out the, the premium list into the cryptoverse.com and I'll see you next time. Bye.